power. The Prime Minister usually is the Minister of Finance in these countries, as I said. And on the odd occasion when he chooses to give it to somebody else, he, he gets a tight grip on it to make sure that he sees and knows what is happening day after day. I help him to make some decisions. The Prime Minister usually is the Minister of Security and Defense. So he let him know that either. He let him know that. So he wanna keep the Prime Ministers in Caribbean Asia hold on to the strings strings is misfellas. They hold on to defense and security because I, I, I wouldn't even add on any of the cause. cause. <laughs> And the Prime Ministers invariably are the head of personnel administration or staff. In other words, they're in charge of all the 20 something thousand citizens. So, all this is not to begrudge a Prime Minister the power, but only to tell you, who never thought about it, what it is. I'm only telling you what it is. If it works, fine. As they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I got a feeling about whether it broke or not. Now all this power in the hands of a, of a person, whether it's the Eugenia Charles, or Air Force Burnham, or Michael Manley, all this power concentrated in the hands of one person, to me, is dangerous. This is my view. It is dangerous. The style, the personality, the character, the popularity of one man or woman defines the country. That is, that is a position all over. Just one man, his personality, or this woman, her style, her general popularity, these are the things that determine the nature of a government. Do you think that is a good thing? Say so. I see this is a, a particularly important now at a time when there's there no longer any cohesive political ideology. They're no longer a socialist party and a conservative party. There's not a, so, a, a socialist party who are fighting for the working man. His rights are ensuring that he gets a fair shake of whatever is going on in the country. And on the other side, a conservative party who is consumed with the interests of the few and the rich, the merchants and the planters and all that. These lines have now become blurred. There is no longer a coherent political philosophy between the two parties. It has become sanitized. His division is sanitized. They say that the Prime Minister is primus inter pares. That's a Latin expression. Meaning, he first and all equals. Now that's a myth. The Prime Minister in our system is not equal to anybody in this country far less equal to other ministers. The Prime Minister has tremendous power and before I give, go down another road, I can give you an example of the powers of, of some of the powers. And these powers they say are, are in, mainly in the constitution, although some of them derive from custom and usage of what we put it with. The Prime Minister appoints the Governor General. He appoints the Attorney General. He appoints the Chief Justice. And when I say he appoints, I mean he and he alone. Now the constitutional purists, and I hear Israeli names mentioned of this here, but they will say to me it is the Governor General who appoints, but I'm going to go past these steps. The Governor General appoints, and he is very supposed to be mentioned, other than the himself of the Governor General, <laughs> all of them, on the recommendation of the Prime Minister after consultation with the Leader of the Opposition. I want you to understand that. The recommendation from the Prime Minister to the Governor General to appoint these various people. But 
the governor general has no choice. So when you say you recommend to the governor general, you're in fact telling the governor general who to appoint. That is what happens. So the prime minister appoints the governor general. He and he alone. No cabinet, no parliament, nobody else. Maybe his wife went to sleep in at night. <laughs> but he and he alone instructs the palace, which means the queen, who is to be governor general. Even the queen doesn't say no. And Mrs. says, I want John Doe. John Doe, she accepts it. And never in the history of these islands that the queen has said no to a recommendation coming from the government. So the prime minister. So he, he, he was the, 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 the attorney general, which is a constitutional position, different from minister. Indeed, the constitution of our base requires that there only be two ministers. <laughs> the Prime Minister and the Attorney General. There is nothing other than custom and good sense that make the Prime Minister apply other people's ministers. He and the Attorney General, according to the constitutional bodies, can do it themselves if they want to do it. The Prime Minister appoints also the Commission of Police, the Chief of, Fire, the Chief, the Chief of Staff of the Defense Force, all the judges, all the permanent secretaries, all the heads of department. He appoints the Public Service Commission, the Police Service Commission, all heads of departments, all diplomats, all heads of mission, every single person who is working in the diplomatic service of Barbados overseas. He, by extension, appoints the Speaker of the House of Assembly. And I'll tell you why, because this parliament that appoints the speaker, but this parliament it really is the majority, the party that has the majority, they appoint it, and the prime minister tells them who he was the speaker. There has not been an occasion where I have seen that challenge. He appoints the president of the Senate. Now this is enormous power. If you look at other situations. Look at the, the, the United States of America, for instance, who some would say the most, the biggest democracy and the most powerful nation on earth. The President of the United States cannot appoint these people that I have mentioned. He comes up with a recommendation which goes to Congress. And Congress for every Supreme Court judge, all these positions, Secretary of State, which become Secretaries of the State who are the cabinet, members of the cabinet, all of these must go to Parliament. Not Parliament, Congress. As the House of Representatives and the Senate. For them to say yes or no. And they often say no. Right now, President Obama is recommending someone uh, for the post of Secretary of Defense. And Congress, not only Republicans in Congress who are on the other side, but members of his party, the Democratic Party, are saying, no way. And they can and they do this. It happens with judges, it happens with ambassadors, it happens with secretaries of state and the government, all of these must meet the scrutiny and approval of Congress. Not so in Barbados, not so in Barbados. The Prime Minister said that today is Minister so and so that he is. He says that Tar Hill here is Chief Justice and he is. He says that the 12 of you there are going to be 12 government senators, and you are the 12 government senators. Nobody, no cabinet, no politician, no MP has a say in any of that. He and he alone. Now, as I speak, I want you to understand that I'm not talking about the situation in Barbados. I'm speaking about the Caribbean. All these Dominica, St. Lucia, Trinidad, Jamaica, 
Belize, Bahamas, all of them. I'm speaking about the power of a prime minister. Our school of politics is intended to be principally a forum for political discourse, which gives greater voice to non-parliamentary members and supporters of our party. Beyond voice, it is also intended to provide greater scope for their contribution to the life and the work of the party. Additionally, it is intended to enhance the knowledge base as well as the political skills of such persons and indeed the political acumen and the talents of new and emerging parliamentarians and aspirants to elective office. It is hoped that the small and basic entity which emerges from this spot will, as it takes shape, extend and expand across the national base of our party. Indeed, it is not the intention to limit its activities and its initiatives to these precincts. Obviously, much of the how will eventualize as we proceed. But clearly, our efforts will and should include training, research together with the establishment of a library facility, mentorship, and the building of support and solidarity mechanisms which can only strengthen the party, serve its greater interests. In terms of content, the focus of our efforts here will entail leadership development, policy formulation, research as I intimated, political communication, political strategizing, government, Opposition politics, because unfortunately there does come that period when you are in opposition. Models of political development. Some aspects of political theory. Our party history and legacy transfer. Sociocultural dynamics influencing our politics and our political culture. Electioneering. Public speaking. Event planning for political purposes, among other things.